I will now see what parts are installed inside this tankless water heater and how it is manufactured. First of all, I will tell you about its safety. Two safety switches are installed here. The one thermostat is installed on this pipe, which will detect the temperature of the water and prevent it from being overheating. The second thermostat is installed here. The hot air will pass through this vent. If the temperature of the air overheats, it will stop the complete system from working. Both thermostats are attached together in series. The one wire is moving inside the system. The one wire from this thermostat is attached to the second thermostat. And then, with the body of the water heater, I will remove these thermostats first of all. And I will save all the screws in one place. Only one screw is installed in this thermostat, which I have removed. It fits inside this bulged copper. The company has saved one in it. These thermostats are from the NGT company and are of the A series, meaning they are normally connected. When the temperature overheats, then this thermostat disconnects. Otherwise, it will normally be connected up to 105 degrees. They will trip if the temperature rises above 105 degrees. And at 85 degrees, it will be connected automatically. They should be normally connected on checking with the multimeter. So let's see, this one is connected. In the same way, I will check the second thermostat as well. This is also connected. Both thermostats are fine. Next, I will remove the chimney of this water heater. I will unscrew all the screws threaded into its body. A bracket is installed on the top. Now I will unscrew the rest of the screws left. All the screws of the chimney have been unscrewed. I will now try to remove this chimney. A hook is fitted here. I will pull this body upward. I will put my hand downward to support it. I will pull the chimney out. And this is how I will remove the chimney. You can see a U-shaped pipe, which is cut in half, has been installed here. The same U-shaped pipe is installed on the corners. And from the inside, it is also designed something this way. I will remove this heat exchanger to show you how it is built. I will unscrew this screw attached to the bracket. But before that, I will unscrew this nut from its bolts threads. I am using a 24mm spanner to do it. The nut has been separated. This pipe is installed with the pipe on the other side, which is the inlet pipe, where the cold pipe connection will be done. I will remove this pipe from here. The pipe has been removed. The pipe is filthy from the inside. It should not have been in such a condition. It might be some kind of chemical. I don't know how it got inside the pipe. This is a brand new tankless water heater. This filth could have caused a disturbance in the working of the water heater if we had not opened the pipe. However, I was already not going to use this pipe, as I will install a different pipe with it. That pipe I will show you when I install this water heater. I will unscrew this screw to remove the bracket. The bracket has been removed. I will explain to you what is the role of this bracket here. I will remove the heat exchanger. It has come out easily. The heat exchanger of this tankless water heater is of very high quality compared to the average tankless heater, and it has a larger pipe than the rest. The size of the pipe is 5 by 8 inches. This pipe is 1 by 2 inches. In normal tankless, a 3 by 8 inch pipe is used, which is smaller compared to this one. The heat exchanger is plain from the inside, and the pipe where the water is heated through. These are those pipes. These pipes on the side are also helpful. The pipe on the left is the inlet, and the pipe on the right is the outlet. The water will come from the inlet. It will move here. This area of the heat exchange heats quickly because it is copper. The water will absorb all the heat when it passes from here and goes to the back of the heat exchanger. Then the water will start to circulate in these pipes. This is the main area where the most heat is captured. And eventually, the water heats up. The water will circulate through these pipes. And will move here. This is where the thermostat was installed. The water will heat up to 60 to 70 degrees here. And will circulate through these pipes and go out of the outlet pipe. This is the technique used to heat the water in tankless. I will now explain to you how this bracket and the nut installed with it work. You can see that it has been grooved from here. The bracket uses this flattened surface to prevent this nut from rotating. The bracket from here has been curved at a 90 degree angle. This area of the bracket is flat. When I place this 90 degree bracket inside the flattened surface. Now, 
I want to tighten the nut on the threads. The bracket is already screwed with the body. Thus the threaded bolt will not rotate. The bracket will work like a spanner from the other side, which will make it easier to tighten and lose the nut without attaching the spanner on the other side. These are the burners installed in this tankless water heater. Seven burners are installed here through which the water is heated. I can now see two ceramic parts. This one is a little curved, but the other is installed on the top of the burners. In my experience, this might be the thermocouple, and this other part could be to produce a spark. I will now dismantle it from here. I have separated them from the burners. This plate, this burner, its gas valve, and other than these at thermostat, I will separate them all. I have separated the burner completely. Now, I can easily work on the burners. I will dismantle the burner first. These cuts are made here, the one on the right and the other on the left. And inside these cuts, screws are tightened. I will unscrew these. These burners have been separated now. These are the seven holes of this burner through which the gas enters it. And this burner started to ignite. Next, I will see the jets of this burner. The number has already been given to them. The number given to these jets is 118. Now, I will talk about this black section of the water heater. This is the pressure control valve. Let me explain how it works. This valve is called a differential pressure valve. It will work if the pressure of the water is inside it, otherwise it will not. As it is a differential valve, it will stay off until its external and internal pressures have no difference. When the internal pressure increases inside, it will press the external pressure or this microswitch, and thus, it will start to work. So now I explain to you how it will press it. Now, I will open this valve to see how it works from the inside. A screw is tightened here. I will unscrew it. The second screw is installed here on the top. I will unscrew this screw as well. I will now push it outward. It is not coming out. I will loosen this screw more. It has come out. You can see that no electronics are used in it. Only and only this will work with the pressure. This pin is installed here. I will press this pin. It will move downward. And as I put my thumb away from it, the pin slowly moved upward. This pin has a very important function. How is this pin moving upward? And how is it turning the microswitch on and off? This is a copper screw inside. I will press it a little. And you will see that the microswitch will turn on and off. It is off right now. Let me zoom the camera so you can see it clearly. I'm pressing the screw. The screw has started to move upward. I will leave it. Then it will turn off. It is turning on and off with this mechanism, which is really important. Without this, it would not work. I believe in always keeping the water pressure good and then using these tankless water heaters. Don't use them in low pressure. It is very harmful. When this water heater is used at low pressures, the heat exchanger damages quickly. If the water pressure is low, the heat exchanger will overheat, and due to some reason, the thermostat is also bad. Then, the heat could burn or even melt the heat exchanger. That is why it should have good water pressure to make it in use. The higher the water pressure, the higher the lifespan of the heat exchanger. Now, pressing the bolt of the microswitch is taking some force. So this means that if the pressure on the spring is more than that, then the microswitch will turn on and off. But here, this pin is moving downward and upward easily. How is it working then? The fun of this mechanism is that it will generate a lot of pressure. That presses the bolt. I will further open it to understand how it functions. Also, be careful about which screw you open from where. And tighten the screw in its same place. This is plastic, and if a wrong screw is tightened, that screw will make a new place for itself. That area could get stripped. While I am opening this screw, the thread of this screw is different from this one. So I will remember this as well. And I was thinking that this screw might be deep inside. And yes, it is. I will rotate it back inside. The screw is fitted inside this cut. I will rotate the spindle. The screw stops inside the cut. By rotating it in the opposite direction, it still stops in the cut of the spindle. I will further dismantle it and see how it works. Here we go. It has been opened. I will carefully separate it. Nothing should fell from inside. It has been opened. A spring is installed here. A pin at the bottom of the spring, which I think touches on a point. As I open it further, I will understand. The valve opens and closes here. This hole is visible and disappears when I am rotating the spindle. And when I rotate it back, 
The valve opens up completely. This is how the pressure of the water is controlled in this water heater. I will try to pull it upward. The bolt was fitted inside this grooved area. A rubber seal is also inside it to prevent it from rotating a lot. It is also used for locking it as well. That bolt is doing two jobs. The one is that it presses the upper body on the differential valve. The second is that it helps adjust the valve. It has nothing inside it, only a pipe is inserted. A rubber seal is on it which prevents water from leaking. I will now remove these screws now. This bracket is installed to save the plastic from getting bad. No mechanism is installed in its screws holes. A single bush is installed here, so we can't install it in the wrong position. I will press it upward to remove it. It has been removed. A pin is made here. The hole here is also kept bigger. Now let me explain to you what happens here. The water comes from this pipe, then moves into this hole. Then, towards this hole made of brass, the water will enter here, and the spindle hole I showed you before. Let me align the hole. The water moves from this hole, and from this hole as well. This is the brass area from the back, and the water comes from this hole of the spindle. When the water moves here through these two holes, you can see that a rubber is already installed inside it. The pin is installed on top of the rubber. This rubber prevents the water from leaking. This pin is also installed here. The pin that I removed earlier, which is seated on this rubber. Then, the spring is mounted on it. When the pressure is put on this spring, so slight pressure will also fall on this rubber. When the valve is closed and the water is not flowing, then, the power of this spring is more than that of the spring installed in this differential valve. This is a very soft spring. In comparison, the spring attached here is stiff and stronger. Now when the water flows here, water also has pressure. Then, the spring's power and water pressure increase the force on the rubber. The pin is initially inside. As the force increases on the rubber, the pin starts to move outward. As this pin moves upward, this microswitch is pressed, and then this microswitch turns on. This means that it should have a lot of water pressure to work. If there is no pressure, hence no pressure difference will be made. Eventually, the system will not work. If it is installed in a low pressure area, install a motor with it to increase the water pressure. The life of the water heater will be increased by doing that. I will remove this rubber from here. Only plastic is beneath it, which works like a piston. It moves back and forth. It has nothing else inside it. This is a very clever system to prevent using electronics and is operated through the pressure difference. I will open this thing as well and see what it is and what is inside it. The wires will have to be pushed in a bit, and then it will come out. This circuit is installed inside it. It is completely covered with silicon. It is made waterproof. The ignition pin is this one. This is its wire, and HV1 is written with the wire. So, from here, we get the spark to run the burners. The electric symbol is made here. The second pin is this one, and with this wire, FS1 is written, which means that this is a thermocouple. If it gets heated, then will the circuit work? To operate this circuit, 3 volts are required. We can get 3 volts through this adapter, which I already showed you at the start of the video. By attaching the adapter pin here, 3 volts will be supplied to it. But if we want it to work without using electricity, then this box is attached here. Let me open it. 2 D-sized batteries will be used in it. Each battery is 1.5 volts. And this is how we will get the 3 volts. A small circuit is installed here on the side. It will work both with the batteries and the adapter. When the water is turned on, then whether the valve is set on the high or the low setting. If the pressure of the water is good then the microswitch turns on. When it turns on, the rest of the functions turn on. Next, the circuit turns on. It has two jobs to do. The first is to turn on the solenoid valve. This is a 3 volt solenoid valve. When the solenoid turns on, then whether the gas is in a low or high setting, it will start to work. When the gas will start to flow in the burners, the circuit board will start to ignite. And obviously, the flames will start on the burners. After that, the function of this second pin will come into play. This pin is a thermocouple. It senses the heat. The signals are received by the circuit board. The circuit board makes the flame stable, and we keep receiving the hot water. As soon as we close the tap or the water, the water stops, and so will the pressure. I have already shown you that thermostats are installed in it for the safety of the water heater. I am tired now, and I run on coffee, so buy it for me on Patreon. Click the link on the screen to visit. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch the next videos. And subscribe. Thank you.